All right, sixth graders, we'll get started here, and we'll be talking about order of operations in lesson 52, or seventh graders, sorry. Uh, if you remember, the four types of math that we worked with over the years, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and we can also... Um, take a number and put some type of exponent there and we've also learned about square root so we are gonna take a look at those in the order of operations the last thing that we don't see up here also are parentheses so with our order of operations if you're following along uh, there Over here we see our order of operations, simplify powers and roots. So we would deal with uh, the powers over here and the square roots over here. Multiply and divide them, again, according to uh, the direction as well. So from left to right, that's the direction that we read. I read from left side to the right side, so that would be next. After doing the multiplication division, next we do addition and subtraction again from left to right. And then also note the parentheses. If things are in parentheses, they must come first before something else. And if there are many different operations in the parentheses, then we go back to the first three rules. In the parentheses, same thing, do the uh, powers and the roots, then multiplication division, then addition and subtraction. All right, and one way to help us remember the order of operations is this little act, this little uh, um, saying here. Please excuse my dear aunt Sally. And remember it by P stands for parentheses, E stands for anything with exponents or square roots, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So the P E M D A and S. Uh, shows, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All right, in example one, we see 2 plus 4 times 3 minus 4 divided by 2. There's no parentheses here. I don't see any powers, and I don't see any exponents. So I need to take and do the multiplication and division first. Okay, So I'm going to do the 4 divided by the 2. And the 4 times 3. Notice I didn't include that minus symbol. I could if I wanted. Um, but that's totally, that's that's up to you. It's a little bit easier sometimes if we just figure out what the number is and then put it in there. So if I rewrite it, I'm going to have 2 plus, And then 4 times 3, that'll be 12. And then I'm going to take the minus symbol you see up here. Put that in there. And over here, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I'll put that in there. Now we do the order of operations again from left to right. And I've only got addition and subtraction left. So I can do those. 2 plus 12 will be 14 minus 2. 14 minus 2 will be 12. So our answer here for example 1 will be 12. All right, we take a look here at example 2. Uh, in this one, we see that uh, we have an exponent up here, so i got to do that first. This is a division symbol, and over here is multiplication. So what I want to do is try to simplify as much as I can, uh, and the first step here is to deal with this number, so that will be 3 squared, so that will be 9 plus 3 times 5 over 2. And then I can do 3 times the 5. So I'll have 9 plus 15 over 2. Now, in this case, you might say, okay, I've got to do division first. But do I do 15 by 2 and 9 by 2? Well, in this case, since this division is being used for both numbers, really what we 
if I rewrite this problem up here, really what we see here is some parentheses. Really, those should be there if we wanted to rewrite it like this. So we would do the numbers here in the parentheses first and then divide by 2, even though it's written this way. So we'll go ahead and, and do 9 plus 15. That will be 24 over 2. 24 over 2. Again, our answer here in example 2 is 12. So if we look back over this problem, we see down here, what should we do? Do the top part first and keep it separate from the bottom part. It's as though there were uh, some parentheses around the top part and the bottom numbers. Even if we went way back over here and added them in there. All right, in example three here, they give us some letters, A plus A times B. And over here, they tell us what the A and the B will be. So we should go ahead and uh, rewrite those in there. So A is 3, so 3 plus 3 times 4. So order of operation says I do the 3 times 4 first. That'll be uh, 12. 3 will stay the same. And now I can do 3 plus 12 equals 15. And that will be our final answer there. Now, one thing that, and that's probably how most of you would do this, but one good habit to get into is parentheses. When you have letters, like we have up here, we should just automatically put some parentheses around them. So for A, and then a plus, and I know I'm doing multiplication over here, so I should do 3 plus 3 times 4. And we look over here and we say, oh, it really seems unnecessary, and that's true. At this point it does, but later on down the road when we have a mixture of letters and numbers and positive and negative symbols, it makes a big difference. This answer will be the same, 3 times 4 will be 12. 3 plus 12 will equal 15, so the answer stays the same in this case. But the reason that they're showing you this is to get you into the habit of adding those parentheses there. All right, here we begin with example 4. We've got x times y minus x over 2. And you notice uh, over here we've got x equals 9 and y equals 2 thirds. Uh, and we'll see how those parentheses come into play here. So let's rewrite this problem. I'll have 9, I'll put that in parentheses, times 2 thirds minus 9, I'll put that in a parenthesis, over 2. All right. In this case here, we, we follow the order of operations, and we're going to have to multiply and divide. So I'll be multiplying these two and dividing. Uh, those two there. 9 times 2 thirds, 2 thirds and 9 is 6. If you wanted to show, see how that works, 9 over 1 times 2 thirds, that will equal 18 over 3, which equals 6. Minus 9 divided by 2, if we need to see how that works over here, it will be. Uh, Four and a half because nine chopped in half, but two goes into nine four times. That'd be eight subtract, and you get one half. All right, now six minus four and a half. Uh, I'm going to rewrite that and I'll do that just off to the side over here. Six minus four and a half, make that a five, two over two. be a half, 5 minus 4 is 1. So that's my final answer there, 1 and a half. So, again, what to point out, use the parentheses. That's good to do. We did our division. We did our multiplication first. And then we were able to solve the problem. All right, 7th graders, you can get started uh, there on your practice set. Continue on your problem set. And don't be afraid to ask any questions.